Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Karen Lavender Clothesline. So today I have a hard goods haul and a few pairs of shoes, just a few things that I wanted to share with you guys. As you know, I've been really mixing up my sourcing. I've been at a couple of flea markets, Roots, Williams Grove, also at a couple of different types of thrift stores, which I've also been invited to film inside a thrift store. The manager contacted me, so I'm very excited about that. That special shop with me will be coming up probably late September. So that's always exciting when somebody in the community that runs a business recognizes the just the value of putting things out on social media and sharing with you guys. And I also have a few auction pieces. I'm looking at the table. Thanks so much for joining in with me today. And I'm just gonna share with you what I know about the items and just what I'm picking up as usual. Nothing new under the sun. So hit that like and subscribe button and let's get started. Right now I'm going to share with you the items that I picked up and I'm going to try to remember to tell you what I think they'll bring. Now as many of you know I've shared that it's kind of hard to tell sometimes what an item will bring when you're doing one-ups and one-ups means you're not buying items in bulk the same item. You're not buying 20 foam cases. Each individual item is different from the next. So sometimes when you have vintage items it's a little bit hard to tell what what they will actually bring but today I'm going to try to give you of course what I paid and I won't remember where it came from because like I said it's all a mix but I'm going to try to share with you what my expectation is of what it'll bring in my store. Now right now my store is on I believe a 25% off sale. You guys know I alternate my sales anywhere from 15% to I'm going to say 40% on rare occasions. So with having said that I also want to share that over on Instagram I posted today that I'm getting ready for vacation I'm leaving for a one-week vacation in about 14 days super excited going down to Florida to be with my family and this is the first time for me in my whole reselling career that I am going to shut everything down and take a good long rest. I have been working really hard this year, really proud of myself, but I know the importance of like really stepping back and just rebooting, you know, rebooting your mind and your energy level. So this will be the first time I will completely shut down my eBay store. Now, when you do that, when you go on vacation, as most of us know, you have a choice. You can either put your store on vacation and put an extended handling time. That means when a person buys something, you're not shipping out right away. You put that extended handling time of how long you'll be gone for. Probably you add in a day or two. So when you get off that plane, you're not running to ship. So let's say you're taking a seven day vacation. You put it on an extended handling time of like eight to 10 days days and you continue through your vacation to answer emails and send messages and you know all of the things so you're still kind of working on vacation really the only thing you're doing is not listing at a clip and you're not shipping out but this time I'm using the choice to totally shut my store off so when somebody searches for my store, it won't be there. And while that's a little bit daunting because you're not making any sales, you're not corresponding, sometimes you need that rest. And burnout can be a real thing in reselling because you're always on the move, you're always sourcing, you're always, you know, it's a real grind sometimes. Even though you love what you do, it can set a pace. So on rare occasions, people will, resellers will, shut down their stores completely. Now, while that gives you a total rest from it, you don't have to answer questions, you don't have to do anything on eBay, when you're ready to turn your store back on, it does take quite a bit of momentum and time to get your store operating and functioning like it was. I always liken it to a hamster wheel. If you're on that hamster wheel, you're a little hamster and you're pedaling, pedaling, that wheel is going around faster and faster. And the faster you pedal, the faster the wheel goes, the more that sells. If you're moving at a slow pace and the hamster is going, you know, just lackadaisical, you're going to sell at a slower pace. If the hamster gets off the wheel and takes a rest, that wheel comes to a stop. And when he gets back on, 
it's going to take him a little while to get that wheel up and running again. So I know that's a crazy analogy, but that's how I've always thought of it. And pretty much that's how it's worked in my store. So with saying all of that, thank you for following my channel. I appreciate it. And just know it's a little heads up. Most likely when I do come home from vacation, I will be running most likely the highest sale percentage that I run, which I'm guessing is going to be somewhere between 40 and 50% off my entire store. And that will get the momentum going a little bit quicker. So I will announce that if I decide to go that way, I haven't totally thought that out. But I wanted to give you guys the heads up that if you've been looking at something in my store, I'm not saying you should wait to buy it, but most likely when I come home from vacation, I'm going to be running really good sales. What shall we talk about first? Let's look at the table. I wish there was a way I could show you the table, stand far back enough from the camera, come close to the camera to show you tags and just have it run smoothly. I'm always still figuring it out. All right, let's get going with the first item. And the first item I found, I believe this was Williams Grove Flea Market. Don't quote me on that. It is an orange glass. It's slag glass, and I'll talk a little bit about slag glasses if you guys don't know what slag glass is. A footed or a pedestal bowl. So at first I said, gee, would I call this a bowl or would I call it a plate? But anytime the sides come up, even the least little bit, I consider it a bowl. So this is glass and the way you tell slag glass, slag glass is another color put in the base of the glass and it's kind of like rippled in there. And I'm gonna try to have the camera pick that up. See this lighter coloring here? That's slag glass. So a lot of times you see it in Tiffany style lamps and those types of things. I'm not sure about the technique. I almost think like another color is dropped in like in painting or something like that but I'm not an artist, so I don't know the technique, but I do know when I see slag glass. So this is unmarked, but I believe this is L.E. Smith. And if you put in uppercase L, uppercase E, I guess you don't have to do uppercase, and then Smith, the last name, and put in orange glass or any kind of glass, very similar items will come up to this. So I believe that's what I have here, really pretty. And what did I pay for this? I believe I paid $2 for this. And this either came from a thrift store or Williams Grove flea market. I did not get this at the auction or yard sale. So that's the best of my memory. And I paid, like I said, $2. And I'm guessing this is going to bring somewhere between $18 and $24. That's my best guess. Really pretty. And it's vintage. The next item I did pick up at Williams Grove Flea Market yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday and I was there. So I picked up this beautiful tin. Now, right away you can tell it's vintage. The knob does have a little bit of wear to the breast finish. And let me see if I can pop it open. You can tell it's vintage by the condition of it inside. And I didn't even look at the markings on the bottom. I just scooped this up right away. Let's see if I can get the top back on. There we go. And I scooped it up because it has a beautiful floral motif. And on the bottom, it says made in Holland container, container made in Holland. So I believe this was for biscuits, or I think we call them cookies here in America. And what did I pay for it? I think I paid $2 again. And I'm guessing this is going to go for about $20 to $22. So that is item number two. The next item I was thrilled to find, this one came from Goodwill and I showed it on Instagram because I was thrilled to find this. So here is this item. This is Fenton Carnival Glass in the marigold color and it has an iridescence to it as you can see. I think the iridescence is mostly a blue color and with my lighting for the camera um, it might not show as vibrant as it is in real life and this is the dragon and lotus pattern. So there is that there. And I paid $3 for this. It was $2.99 and this is listed in my store. Now I have to remember what I listed it for. I'm going to say I have this on for I think the original price around 70 and then running sales it'll probably sell for around the mid 50 range. 
So if you're really interested, you can go to my eBay store, Lavender Clothesline, and just look for Fenton Dragon and Lotus or Lotus and Dragon pattern. The next item will really switch it up, and I'm sure again most of you have heard of this, but Texas Instrument Calculators can bring very good money. Now, if you're unfamiliar with which ones bring good money, most of them are the graphing calculators, you can just look up the name of the calculator right into an eBay search. So you slide off the cover, and right up top it tells you which calculator it is. I always keep batteries in the house to test it, but I am taking a chance in the thrift store of purchasing it if they have no returns that the item works. Now, most thrift stores will be really good about it if you get this home and you've bought batteries or put batteries in it and it doesn't work at all. I don't think they want to cheat people, so I'm going to say that you know, I'm going to venture a guess that most thrift stores, if I said, hey, I bought this calculator, I paid X amount, it doesn't work at all, I think most thrift stores will not give you a hard time about it. But this is Texas TI 84 Plus Silver Edition, and it is a graphing calculator. So you just turn it on, and we'll put in 89 plus 25. And there you can see, oh, did I say 25? I did 89 plus 2. My fingernail hit it. You always want to test them before you send it out. This calculator, I paid uh, $4 for. It was $3.99, and I'm expecting about the $50 mark for it. It's in very good condition. I did clean the case. I did it with a very light water. I kept water away from the actual um, you know, device, and I used a magic eraser to get any scuffs off, so it came out really nice. And just shut that off. So there it is, Texas Instruments Graphing Calculator. Right now I'm going to take a few minutes and just talk about these little brushes. Do you guys have these brushes? I originally bought a six pack from Amazon to clean the reusable straws with and I am finding these little brushes invaluable. Let me do that and see that you can see it. Invaluable in cleaning small spaces on figurines and vintage items. These are great. The bristles are really soft, so it's not going to hurt your item. And uh, like I said, six pack of different sizes. And I think I paid, now don't quote me, um, I think I paid under $15 for six of them. I think I paid 12 something. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you're not already using these, these are wonderful. This next item I saw sitting on a table and really liked the graphic of it, the design of it, the color of it, beautiful paint job. And I did have quite a while ago a dish that I had sold, I couldn't remember the name of it, that reminded me of this. That one was a burgundy color and I don't know that it had a maker's mark on the bottom. This one on the bottom just says Germany 1019 slash 16. So that's what I put into a Google search along with aqua colored pitcher, I called it. And the name Karsten's Tonyshoff came up, which is a German company. I think they're back from the 1800s and then they shut down their factory. I'm gonna say a little bit after World War II and then they regrouped, I think it was two brothers and they produced from 1945, I'm gonna test my knowledge to I think 1974. So it's no longer produced. This is my knowledge of it, I could be wrong. Made in Germany, beautiful. Mid-century modern, I'm going to call this dish and uh, either a cruet or a creamer. Let me turn it around. The pattern almost reminds me, I'm going to put this piece down, almost re reminds me of a turtle shell pattern. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Dark back. So from putting in the markings, it does have Karsten's Tony Schaff came up and I'm going to attribute it to that maker. What did I pay for this? I paid... I can't remember where I got this. I got this at the flea market and she took four for the two pieces. She wanted five. I said, would you take four? And what do I expect to get for this? Not a lot, probably about the 30 to $35 mark, I'm guessing. So that is that. Another item that I like to pick up because I think it has a lot of uses. I don't know exactly what the original use for this is, but is this vintage pedestal or footed wood bowl. So as you can see, it's like an oval bowl pedestal 
and um, this one has the felt applied. You can always tell vintage by the age of the felt on the bottom. Now, nowadays, people can go out and buy felt and do the same thing, but this was a very popular thing. People took such care of their homes, so they always wanted to put felt on the bottoms of things so that it did not mar or scratch the surface, and I love that idea. Okay, now I've gotten <laughs> off topic, but I actually like these bowls, ready for this, as soap dishes. Now, to be truthful, I don't know if soap, wet soap, is going to ruin this bowl. Most likely, a lot of water sitting in it won't be good for it. But I have sold these with the suggestion of using them by farmhouse sinks in country decor. It could also be a nut bowl, a trinket bowl, candy dish, you know, all the things. So I put those in my title too because I really don't know what the original use was for this. I imagine probably some kind of little thing to eat, whether it's nuts or candy. But I think these make great soap dishes. So again, I don't know that it's that smart to do that, but I always give that suggestion. And where did I get this? Hmm, I think this was an auction find. It was in a box that came from the auction. Don't quote me on that because I don't film in the auction. I'm just going to auctions and putting things in my car. And sometimes even what's in a box lot, you know, it's kind of a surprise because you're bidding on, you know, what you've seen and you're allowed to rummage through them. So sometimes it's a surprise to me that, oh, this is great, look what I got. You know what, I did know I was buying this one. I'm going to say this came from the Toomey auction, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so I paid a couple of dollars for it. What do I think I'll get for this? I think it's listed in my store. I'm going to say mid-20s, maybe. So there is that. The next item I found at a Goodwill and fell in love with this the minute I saw this, it went in my cart. So I'm actually going to put this on for you guys. Look at this hat. How good is this hat? The minute I saw this, I thought Kentucky Derby. Is this not the most quintessential Kentucky Derby hat? Do we not love this? I thought this was great fun. I have a mirror over on the wall here. Look at the, look at the um, what is this called? The crown? The crown of the hat is like actually a little bit higher on one side than the other. This would be great to wear to a fun party. I might wear this. I might go to the Kentucky Derby. But I think somebody on my showed it on Instagram, I'm going to say, and somebody said they have the same exact hat. Forgive me, I've forgotten your name, but us girls have decided that we're going to the Kentucky Derby together. <laughs> we're going to wear our hats together. So really fun. Let me take it off to show you the label. This is Andre of Canada. So I believe it's vintage, meaning at least 20, if not 30 or more years old. I could be wrong about that. But the thing I absolutely love about this is they've made a twisted like bow ribbon type of thing on the, on the top. I just absolutely love it. Really nice quality and it has no size, but it says Canada hat, Montreal, Canada, Andre with, a, with a, um, an accent over the E. So said yes to that. I think I think I paid $1.97 for this and I think I have this on for 70 Yep, I'm that crazy, but it'll go on sale. So maybe I'll just wear this the rest of the way. How fun is this? This is great fun. Okay, put that down. Next item up was a thrift store find. This is a welcome sign. It's stenciled on a piece of slate. And you can see it has hummingbirds and, oh, I know the name of these. This is not fuchsia, this is mandevilla. Is that what those flowers are? If we have any gardeners out there, you can leave a comment down below telling me what flowers these are. And on the back, Cape Cod Stencil Company, West Barnstable, Maine. For outdoor use, remove leather permanently attached slate to house. So you can, you can attach this to your house. Now, the only thing I don't like about these slates, I've sold quite a few of them, is slate is highly breakable. To me, slate is almost more breakable than glass, it seems. So you really have to do a very good packing job on these, but people love these. And to put the three things together, a stenciling, hummingbirds, and a slate sign, this will be, be a good seller. So I pay, I think I actually paid $4.99 for this, so $5.00. And what do I have this on for? You know, guys, when I list something, I'm just doing it so quick. 
I should make a whole list before I do these videos, but I don't have time to sit down and go through everything to gather the prices. So again, sorry, you can look at my store what it's selling for. I'm going to guess around the 50, 45, $50 mark. That could be wrong, but um, that's my guess. Okay. The next item up is a sweet planter, vintage planter with a mama and a baby deer. So what is that? A fawn and a doe, right? Is that right? And really nice condition. No chips or cracks. I really love these little faces. And this is Shefford, I believe. Uh, I'm going to get my magnifying glass. I actually am a little prepared today. I love a good magnifying glass. Shafford, S-H-A-F-F-O-R-D, Japan. So it's vintage and the telltale felt sign on the bottom. <laughs> and I don't imagine this will bring a lot. I believe I paid $2.99 for it, so $3. And I'm thinking probably around the $20 mark. These don't bring a high amount, but how can you walk away from something so sweet and so cute and in such good condition? Now, I did dig out the, they had the foam, the uh, oasis that you soak water in. So I dug that out and right behind that came two, hopefully clean, ped stockings. You know, the little foot stockings. I guess they needed a little extra padage in there. And um, yeah, so of course I washed it out thoroughly and it's in great shape, minus the stockings. Okay, what am I up to now? Next, I want to talk about these. I love this next item. You guys know I love wood items and I found these bookends. Look how gorgeous the wood is on this. And I guess they're donkeys. I'm, I'm assuming they're donkeys because their ears are pointed. And on the bottom, they are either marked with a six or a nine. There's no line, you know, saying which way the number is going. But I'm pretty sure these are mahogany. I am trying to learn my woods. And I'm still reading the book that Peggy Sue gave me. So thank you, Peggy Sue. She's a sweetheart. She sent me a book on all the different woods and how to tell them apart. So I am trying to learn. There are a lot more woods out there than I ever realized. You know, we all talk about like teak or pine or oak, you know, the trees you have in your neighborhood, you hear the names. But when you really get into it, there are like thousands of woods out there. But the main woods, it's nice to be able to try to learn them. So I'm going to guess that these are mahogany and really beautiful. It's definitely a hard wood. And I just thought they were gorgeous. So I did pay. What did I pay for them? They were in a bag together. I think I paid $4 for the two and really, really sweet. So and in my store, I have these high. I'm going to say I have them. <laughs> now I'm just embarrassing myself. How much do I want for these? 70 is sticking in my head, but that might be from another item. I have no idea. You guys are going to have to forgive me. Doing the best I can. Okay. Talking about doing the best I can, I want to talk to you guys about something. You ready for this? I love you guys. You guys are so encouraging and so kind, and I appreciate all of your loyal watching and asking when another video is coming out. But there are a few people who insist on correcting me in a rude way. Now, while I always welcome criticism that's constructive, like, hey, you said it was a this, but it's really a that. You might want to look that up. Great. I'm fine. But when I am getting ready to go into a thrift store and I'm going to film in that thrift store, please keep in mind that I'm filming. So unless you are in a thrift store with a mask on, with your handbag, with your camera, with gloves, pushing a cart, trying to be respectful of other people, following the arrows, this is a tough act. So if I do something that you guys think I should do differently, most of the times, I love you guys, but you need to keep it to yourself. Recently, I filmed, I got all ready. I was in my car, right? I had just come out of regular Goodwill. I got in my car. I said, I'm regrouping, right? Because now I'm going into the bins. It was for the bins video. And I got in my car and I said, okay, I need this, this, and this. I'm going to film. I, I got to make sure that, you know, my camera is charged, all the things. And I said, oh, I definitely need a mask. So I put my mask on and then I realized, oh, I need an intro for this. Let me just film quick that we're going into the bins together. So literally I had all of my stuff with me. I put my mask on. I realized I need an intro. I pick up my phone. I talk to you guys. I don't think anything of it. I'm parked. I'm in a parking lot and I go into the store and I film the video. 
the video comes out and a few people wanted to criticize I was wearing my mask in my car. Really? Is this what we're going to give each other a hard time about? Guys, we are all trying the best we can, I'm sure. So if you think that I need to not wear my mask for the 30 seconds it's going to take me to do an intro before going into film a video for you guys, you need to watch another channel. And I know that might be a harsh thing to say, but I am doing this, number one, to have a good YouTube channel, but number two, to share with you, you know, I want everybody else to succeed in finding things and be successful in their business. So if I happen to put on my cloth mask a little bit ahead of time, why in the world would you say, you know, something like the person said, I won't repeat it, and then say, unsubscribe. Great. Love you guys. But if that bothers you that I'm putting on a mask 10 seconds before I go into a store just to give you an intro of what the video is going to be about and you need to unsubscribe, I fully support you in that. Don't follow me. It's all good. Also, I wanted to hit on another topic. Now, this was just out of concern for me, so I very much appreciate this. You guys were concerned that I was digging through the bins without gloves totally an accurate and valid concern, I'm going to say, because the bins do have a lot of broken glass. One time I saw a hypodermic needle. Yep, a needle in the bins. No, I don't dig a lot, but I do carry gloves in my handbag. But on this day, the buttons on my phone camera would not start and stop with the glove on. So there I am pushing a cart being respectful not to film other people. I've got the mask on. I'm trying to follow all the protocols, six feet, the whole thing. And I could not push the buttons on my I-8 with the gloves on. So I took the gloves off. I got a lot of comments about like I was so ignorant of not wearing gloves. Guys, I'm on it. I am on it the best that I can. Always know that I am trying to do the best I can in life as we all are, and it's okay. So if you have the need or you feel upset by something I'm doing, not out of me doing it purposely, but just that I am, you know, missing the mark for you, I fully support you. Okay, end of that long commercial. Let's get on and talk about something fun and sweet. Look at this little guy. Is he not the cutest pig? I love this guy. Now I did pick him up at the flea market and again with the mask and all the things and I didn't realize he has a little break in his leg. He's missing his foot. But look at that face. So as you know, I, I try not to sell chipped broken items but I don't want to throw him out. A lot of times if something is damaged, resellers will just get rid of it. They'll just throw it out and not deal with it. But I just couldn't do that. <laughs> I am getting old for sure. 60 is hitting in an unusual way, getting sentimental about pig statues. But I just love him. So he's going in my store. He's just the sweetest thing. His arms are crossed in the front. And is he marked? I don't see a marking on him. But because his little foot is broken, which I don't know that that matters a lot if you're going to put him on the shelf this way. But anyway, I will list him very inexpensively. Not so much to even recoup my money. That doesn't matter to me because I didn't pay much for it. But just so he doesn't go to the landfill. I just can't do it. Look at those cheeks. So cute. All right, staying with the pig theme, I picked up a few more pigs. I picked up this sweet little pig and she's in good condition. Now she's marked Ava. I don't know if Ava is the name of the pig or if that is the company that made the pig. Does that, does that focus? I'm trying not to put things too close to the lens. Sometimes I'm too far, sometimes I'm too close. But yeah, she's a little laughing piglet. So in the same grouping, I bought all the pigs in one grouping. What did I pay for them? I think I paid a dollar a pig. And I got this pig. I love pigs. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. And I did hear the other day from somebody, I think it was on a YouTube, was it on a YouTube channel? I heard it somewhere, that um, cats are the number one selling animal on, not real cats, but you know, figurines and stuff like that, number one selling animal on eBay are cats. So if you're deciding to sell all little figurines and tchotchkes, cats is probably the way to go but I love a good pig. <laughs> okay, so that was number two. Nope, that was number three. And then the last two 
are these salt and pepper shakers. Vintage, really sweet. I love them. And when I bought them, they had little names here. Somebody put on a piece of tape and put like Clarice and somebody. So I don't know if they had family members and they were claiming their salt and pepper or they were reminding themselves not to eat too much. I'm not quite sure. Really sweet though. I love them. Now the stoppers are a little bit wonky. So they might need replacement stoppers, which I won't do. Um, a lot of times the stoppers, the vintage ones, could be rotted or they break. This one has a piece of tape on it. So I don't know that I'm even going to play with that, but I thought they were really sweet. Okay, so I paid, I believe, I'm going to say 4 or $5. This was a flea market find, and I'm probably going to put just a nominal amount. I'm, I'm guessing the broken one may be under $5, and the other one somewhere between 8 and 10 something like that. But I said yes to pigs. All right, now I'm confused to what I talked about and what I didn't. I think I have a couple of more items. If you're still with me, please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification. Most days I am trying my very best to get a video out on Wednesday and Sunday. It seems like a good pace for us, but that can always change, whether it's a camera problem or whatever, but that's what I shoot for. But if you hit the bell notification, it should notify you of when a video is posted. I don't think it's instantaneously, but it does notify you. I get notified for other people's videos that I hit the bell for. All right, next up is a basket. When baskets don't have a set company marking on it, like uh, Longberger or Peterborough, I go by the look of the basket and if I think I can sell the basket. This one, I call this a kidney shape. Other people call it another shape. Use your imagination. I think it's like a hiney shape. <laughs> um, and this one had striping in it. The weaving is very good and it's secretly signed up in one of the little reeds. I believe it says Taylor. I would need a magnifying glass again. Taylor 91, I believe it is. So I thought this basket was good enough. I paid $2. I love the kidney shape. And this one actually sits, it's rounded on the bottom, so it does not sit like this. It sits more like this. So if you have like two little plants coming out of it, really sweet. And I thought this was good. I did not look it up, but I said yes to it. So Taylor, good job in making your basket. Okay, so I'm just gonna end with two pairs of shoes that I picked up. Both of them had a little bit of a surprise for me. This one is called Soft Science. I have never heard of Soft Science and I buy a lot of shoes. So I thought that was interesting. It's a lightweight, stable, shock absorbing, odor resistant shoe. Just very outdoorsy, casual. This is a woman's and it's a, like a canvas on the outside. Here's the other one. And um, like I said, I never heard of Soft Science. I paid $7.97 for them. I did look them up. They are online, not terribly saturated with them. There's not a lot of them, but I thought these were good for the $7.97. And what do I expect these to bring? I think these are listed, and I think I have them on for 30 And buyer always pays shipping with me. The last pair of shoes, okay, I have to admit, I don't know if I knew this and forgot or I didn't know it. Johnson and Murphy women's shoes. I was like, wait, what? I didn't realize that Johnson and Murphy makes women's shoes. I'm so used to seeing it in men's like wingtips, brogues, you know, all the, all the type of career shoes. So when I saw Johnson and Murphy, but it had like metallic gold flex over, this is almost like a cork look fabric or leather. I think it's leather. I was like, huh, Johnson & Murphy women's shoes. And to be truthful, I kind of like these. I do not need another pair of shoes. I, I'm really trying to pare down. You know, as I bring all of this into my house, all of this eBay stuff and all of the equipment for YouTube, I find it really gratifying to get rid of some of my personal stuff because I don't want my house to look like a hoarder house. Now, while you know I keep almost all of my eBay inventory downstairs in the basement, thank goodness I couldn't picture living with like 5,000 items for sale in my house. I do um, try to lessen my collections of things. Recently, I talked about my flip-flops. I'm a flip-flop girl, love a good pair of flip-flops. I have reef flip-flops. 
I have Tory Burch flip-flops. I love flip-flops. But this Johnson & Murphy shoe is really pretty. So this is like a metallic, I'm going to call it like a snake skin or a, it doesn't have texture to it. It's smooth, like a reptile. And then it's got the gold leather back here. And then, like I said, it's like cork. It's perforated, but it is leather. So I thought these were gorgeous. And what size? I think they are my size. Um, eight and a half. Phew, I'm an eight. <laughs> Saved myself from keeping the inventory. So yeah, so I said yes to these. These were $7.87 and or is it $7.97? It's one of those. And what do I have these on for? I'm going to say around the $40 mark. But I don't think I called these new because unless I'm positive something is new, I try not to do that. But they don't really have any signs of wear, but I, I think I just called them pre-owned in very good condition. But it doesn't look like any, anybody's worn them. All right, so that is my crazy haul today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys very much. And I want to thank you again for all of your encouragement, your kindness, your help. You guys are on it. Whenever I say, hey guys, what is this? You know, you guys just help me out so much and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So I hope everybody is staying well and I hope your sales are good. I hope you guys are listing. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.